Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Menopause University. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd still be in school at this stage of your life? At least you don't get a grade. And speaking of grades and stages, this is video number 328, and it's on the grading and staging of endometrial uterine cancer. I've already given you eight videos that have set the foundation for this one. We have covered the anatomy of your uterus and endometrial uterine cancer in video 320, incidence and prevalence in video 321, risk factors in video 322, estrogen as a cause of endometrial uterine cancer in video 323, frenetic genetics of endometrial uterine cancer in video 324, pathology in video 325, symptoms in video 326, and diagnosis in video 327. You see how one topic leads to the next? <laughs> so today we'll be discussing the grading and staging of endometrial uterine cancer that follow diagnosis. Now back in video number 314, in the unit on cancer in general, I gave you a video entitled Cancer Assessment. And in that video, I introduced you to the concept of ranking cancers with regard to their grade and stage. So now we're going to do just that for endometrial uterine cancer specifically. Now, I do not delineate the grading and staging in my book in either the first or the second edition. This video is a bonus, but you do need to watch it. Just because something is not in my book does not mean it's unimportant. It simply means that I had to limit what I could put in my book in order to avoid making it an encyclopedia. <laughs> it's already quite hefty. <laughs> so last week, I used school as an analogy for evaluating bleeding when you shouldn't bleed. And I'm going to use school again today to explain grade and stage of endometrial uterine cancer. But in school, your stage and grades increased in proportion to your performance and intel intelligence with higher grades and stage being desirable, right? Well, it's not like that for endometrial uterine cancer or any other cancer. And I find that kind of disturbing. You may too. So as usual, I will start by reviewing the definition of grade and stage, and then I'll give you the actual grading and staging systems for endometrial uterine cancer. This is the stuff that makes all the difference between one cancer and another. This is what results in the fact that no two cancers are ever quite the same. So it's important to understand how they are ranked. You know how you get graded in school based on your performance? I mean, you get grades for each assignment and for each test throughout the school year, and at the end of the year you get a report card with all your grades. And those grades are a measure of how close you came to 100%, which constituted a perfect score. An A was better than a B, and a B was better than a C. Well, the purpose of the grade of endometrial uterine cancer is similar. Grade refers to the degree of abnormality of the actual cancer cells. In other words, grade compares the endometrial uterine cancer cells to normal cells and designates how significant the difference is. So grading designates the cancer's personality based on how differentiated the cancer cells are. The more well differentiated they are, the closer they are to a benign cancer. And the more poorly differentiated they are, the closer they are to a malignant cancer. A well differentiated cell is very close in appearance to the normal parent cell, and it can still perform its functions. A moderately differentiated cell is halfway 
between a perfectly normal parent cell and a severely abnormal cell, and it may or may not still perform its function. A poorly differentiated cell is so unlike the normal parent cell that it's difficult to recognize or identify that cell type at all, and it does not perform its function. And another name for poorly differentiated cells is anaplastic cells. So the more poorly differentiated the cancer cells, the more poorly they perform their functions. This is true of your school grades too. The farther you get from 100% performance, the worse your performance and the worse your grade. But notice that grading scales for endometrial uterine cancer in school are reversed. In school, the higher your grade, the better off you are. With endometrial uterine cancer, the higher your grade, the worse off you are. In the last video, I addressed how one makes the diagnosis of endometrial uterine cancer. And you learned that it requires sampling of your endometrial cells lining the inside of your uterus. The sample goes to the pathology lab where the pathologist examines the cells under a microscope. And that's how we get this information on the grade of the cancer. So the grading system for endometrial uterine cancer goes like this. GX is a grade that cannot be assessed. G1 is well differentiated or low grade. G2 is moderately differentiated or intermediate grade. G3 is poorly differentiated or high grade. And G4 is undifferentiated and also high grade. If we chart this, here's what we get. And as with all cancer grading systems, the higher the grade, the worse the cancer. It's just the opposite of school grades. Now, the other aspect of cancer ranking is stage. Using our school analogy, this would be like your level of education. The more school you've attended, the higher your stage of education. And with school, the higher your stage of education, the better off you are. But again, it's reversed for endometrial uterine cancer. With it, the higher your stage, the worse off you are. The stage of cancer designates how far it has spread. So this pertains to the five steps of cancer progression that I delineated in video number 314 on cancer assessment. They are transformation, proliferation, invasion, metastasis, and dissemination. But different cancers have different systems for expressing those steps. And that's what we call staging. The staging system used for endometrial uterine cancer is the Fédération Internationale of Gynecology and Obstetrics System, which goes by the acronym FIGO or FIGO. The FIGO staging system uses Roman numerals to designate the location of the cancer with regard to its origin in the uterus and degree of spread. And then there are subparts to the Roman numerals designated as A, B, and C to specify details. So the general staging system using just the Roman numerals goes like this. Stage one is the uterus only. Stage two is the uterus and the cervix. Stage three is the pelvis only. And stage four is beyond the pelvis. So now, this would be analogous to designating stage one of education as elementary school only, stage two of education as high school, stage three of education as college, 
and stage four of education as graduate school. Then, when you add the subparts for each of the Roman numerals, it gets a bit more detailed. Stage 1a is limited to just the endometrial lining itself. Stage 1b invades more deeply into the muscle underlying the endometrium. Stage 1c invades more than half of the thickness of the underlying muscular layer. So you see that stage is about depth of invasion of the cancer. For stage 2, involving the cervix, stage 2a is cancer that invades only the innermost glands of the cervix. Stage 2b is cancer that invades the layer under those innermost glands of the cervix. So the same principle that deeper invasion is more advanced holds true. Stage 3 is cancer that is extended beyond the uterus, but not outside the pelvis. Stage 3a is cancer in other reproductive organs, such as your fallopian tubes or ovaries. Stage 3b is cancer in your vagina. Stage 3c is cancer in the lymph nodes of your pelvis. And you can think of lymph nodes as the filters around your uterus. It's like drawing a bigger and bigger circle to show the extent of spread. Stage four is cancer that has spread beyond your reproductive organs and invaded other organ systems. So stage 4a is cancer in your bladder or rectum, and stage 4b is distant metastases anywhere in your body. So here's a chart of the staging for endometrial uterine cancer. Here you see the stages in the left column and the extent of spread in the right column. And what I've done is just color-coded the chart with stage 1 in red, stage 2 in pink, stage 3 in purple, and stage 4 in blue. For each of the subparts of the Roman numerals, I've indicated the extent of spread that it represents. Endometrial uterine cancer typically advances gradually by enlarging and encroaching on nearby structures as it grows. In video number 314, I, thought, I taught you that cancers can spread in three different ways. They can spread locally by just getting larger and larger and invading nearby tissues and organs. Or, they can spread by traveling through lymph nodes, which are the sewer or filtration system of your body. And thirdly, they can spread by entering your bloodstream and circulating to other parts of your body. With our school analogy, most students only have the stepwise spread from one school level to the next. You typically just progress from one grade to the next in a predictable stepwise manner. First grade, then second grade, etc. And that would be like the gradual local spread of a cancer. But if you're a genius, you might get to skip a few grades and get to a higher level faster. And that would be like spreading via the bloodstream and getting farther faster. In keeping with the pyramids I used to dis demonstrate the grading of endometrial uterine cancer, we can use pyramids to depict this staging too, albeit an inverted pyramid once again for school staging. Cancers have personalities. Some tend to spread more by blood or lymph early in the course of disease, and others remain fairly localized for a long time before traveling via lymph or blood. Endometrial uterine cancer tends to be one that stays localized for a long time. That's why, that's one of the reasons it's not on the 10 most unwanted disease lists of many doctors. So if we use our pyramids to depict this, it's going to be an inverted pyramid again also. And that's because endometrial uterine cancer starts small and slowly expands just like an inverted pyramid. Fortunately, there are a whole lot of precancerous phases that precede endometrial uterine cancer. So it takes a very long time for endometrial uterine cancer to become advanced. 
If we add all the pre-cancer stages to our chart of staging for actual cancer, it looks like this. Now I've added the progressive pre-cancers to the top of the chart we had a few minutes ago. Hyperplasia is an aqua and is absolutely non-cancerous. A typical hyperplasia is transitioning into more disorganized cells that start tending toward cancer but in a non-identifiable way and it is not cancer. The yellow rows are the dysplasias and dysplasias involve increasing levels of disorganization, but they are not cancer either. But they're just one step away. And this is where the transition from non-cancer to cancer starts taking place, because next you have neoplasia, which is cancer, and it entails all the cancers in the rows below it. In video 325 on the pathology of endometrial uterine cancer, I refer to the concept of breaking the barrier or letting loose. So this is the point when the disease process has transitioned from a non-cancer to a cancer. So you can see that there are many different stages in the development of endometrial uterine cancer. And knowing where you fall in this lineup is key because it dictates everything about your management options and treatment. So next week we'll use this to discuss treatment of endometrial uterine cancer and precancer. Unfortunately, graduating to the next level of staging in endometrial uterine cancer isn't anywhere near as satisfying as graduating to the next level of education. Because overall, a higher grade and more advanced stage is good for education and bad for endometrial uterine cancer. Do you see how everything makes sense when you learn it in a stepwise manner? It makes you really eager to get to the next lesson, doesn't it? <laughs> if you want to print out the chart of staging for endometrial uterine cancer, you'll find it as a link in the description box, and you'll also find it at my website, menopausetailor.me. And at menopausetailor.me, you can schedule a consultation if you want me to tailor all this menopause stuff specifically to you. You'll be thrilled and amazed at how valuable a consultation is. I invite you to also subscribe to both my newsletter and my YouTube channel. And following me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram is optional. <laughs> but coming back next week is mandatory. All right, class dismissed. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>